Hi, this is Kate Allen, PSMJ's Director of AEC Industry Surveys, and I'd like to give you a brief demonstration of our customized abridged benchmarking tool today. Before we get started, I just wanted to let you know, please mark your calendars. Um, here's what's in store for our survey program for 2014. Um, we'll be sending out two compensation surveys this year, our annual management comp survey, which gathers data related really to a person's role in the firm, such as chairman of the board, principal, project manager, et cetera. But after receiving many, many requests for compensation data that's more related to years of experience, we've added a new survey for 2014, which is called the Staff Compensation Survey. And this survey basically will gather critical data for architects, mechanical, electrical, civil, and structural engineers, as well as environmental engineers and scientists, and several support positions such as CAD, clerical, and marketing coordinators. The real goal, goal is to provide the industry with the data that they need in order to strategically attract and retain talent as our people resources become more and more scarce. And fundamental to that is making sure you have good compensation data. We'll also be issuing our annual financial performance survey. And we tend to open this one for participation once we know the majority of the firms have closed their books for the year. So you'll notice it opens in mid-February. Um, last year, we had nearly 275 firms participate. And that's where we take the tw top 20%. Um, and they're selected for PSMJ's prestigious Circle of Excellence Award, which you'll be hearing more and more about in the months ahead. But in order to provide the critical benchmarking data for the industry, we need your firm to share your information. So we do what we can to make it easy. And we offer several perks that are for participants only. And one, which is our very popular benchmarking tool. So let me take you on a brief tour. We'll start with our PSMJ Management Compensation Tool. And this is exactly what the tool will look like when you get it. Um, generally, you will start here on the landing page, which will tell you that, you know, they can remind you what the five simple rules of benchmarking are. The next is, again, this is an Excel workbook, so there are tabs across the bottom. We'll go next to Select Benchmark. And let me explain a little bit about the layout of this page. Um, we indicate the firm size here, which is 125 people. And the major service that they offer is engineering as prime. And this is pulled directly from their survey. It comes forward. Now, the layout here is um, the peer groups, basically. If you look here, we have the overall survey results, which are 140 firms. And we had 140 firms participate in the survey, so these are big, small, architect, engineers, et cetera. Generally, you won't benchmark against this group, but if you want to see kind of what the industry, the industry numbers are looking like, you can look at this benchmark. But we also benchmark by firm size. Um, you can see we do 1 through 20. And then we list the number of firms that are in that pool for um, you to consider. The next peer group is based on practice area, which could be architecture, engineering prime, engineering sub, et cetera. We also break out um, our firms based on whether they do the majority of the work with private clients, government clients, or if they have no preference, we put them in mixed clients. And finally, our last peer group is based on market sector. And it's more difficult to get information that breaks out down to this fine level. So we provide the information for you, but as you can see here, there are four or five firms in some of these groups, and you might just take that um, kind of with a grain of salt. But anyway, here are the benchmarks that we share with you as part of your tool. You'll notice over here it's total compensation, which is salary plus bonus. And in this column here is actually your firm's data. And again, because the survey is part of this workbook, your actual survey that you've completed, it pulls it forward from the data that you've already keyed into that survey. And that shows up here in this column. Over here, you'll notice that we report our data um, as a normal curve. So the 25th percentile, the median, which is not the average. Um, instead, it's 50% of the firms in the survey fell to the left of that point, and 50% of the firms fell to the right. So it's the top of the normal curve. And then the 75th percentile. Let's just look at chairman of the board, for example. Your firm pays 178000 
So a general statement could be that the median for the industry is around 215. The 25th is around 138,000, so you're somewhere in between there. But again, it's generally you don't want to benchmark yourself against the overall industry. It's better to drill down a little bit. So when you're looking at compensation data, it's better to look by firm size. Let's pick here a number five, which is staff size 101 to 250. And let's go back and look at the key indicators. Now things don't look quite as out of line as they may have before. Again, your firm pays 178,000 for the chairman of the board. The median is 221, but the 25th percentile is 166,000, and the 75th percentile is 352. So depending on where you want your compensation to land, this can give you a feel for whether you're kind of meeting the market or if you're beating the market or a little under. Now this is also a firm that practices engineering prime, so let's go see if any of those numbers change. And one that stands out right away to me is the 75th percentile went to over 400,000. And the median's up to 240, almost 244,000. So generally when I benchmark, and when I'm doing compensation, staff size is the priority or gets the most weight. And then I would also probably look at engineering prime. And then I would look at the numbers over here in these other peer groups to see if I felt that they were fairly good representatives or fairly or not good representatives of my firm in particular. Let me continue on with the tour here. So firm trends, again, all of your data would automatically show up in the most recent year. The previous years here in the green cells um, are information that you can go ahead and input. And what it will show up is on key plots and historical trends. So we also give you a graphic representation of each one of these benchmarks. So again, the peer group that we happen to pull data for right now is Engineering Prime. There's 46 firms in that group. If we look at the graphs on the left-hand side, we can see for Chairman of the Board, total compensation. Our firm shows up in the blue. The 75th percentile is in the yellow. The median is in the red. And the 25th percentile is in the purple. We do that for Chief Executive Officer, for CFO, et cetera, for 18 different positions from Chairman of the Board down to Junior Project Manager. The graphs on the right-hand side are, are more historical trends really for the industry. And what we consider the industry are, is the full survey pool. So you can see we give you 10 years of data here. Your data for the most recent year shows up here. If you had input your data on the firm trends, then you would see more blue bars here. But this is the median for the chairman of the board over the past 10 years for the industry on, av on, on average. So now let's go back and let's look at the financial performance survey um, benchmark tool. Again, a very similar landing pa page. You have five simple rules for benchmarking. Let's go over to the select benchmark. Here we can see that this time our sample firm is 320 people and practices in architecture. And right now we're looking at the results for the overall survey, which was 269 total firms. Let's go look at the metrics or the key indicators that we offer. Um, we have operating profit without bonus, you know, before bonus and taxes as a percent of net revenue. So it looks like industry-wide, that was about 11.4% was the median last year. Um, we look at net direct labor multiplier achieved. So this is not the target, but this is what was actually achieved. Our firm is about 3.19. The industry was trying to hit about a 3.02. We can also look at net revenues per total staff, um, overhead rate as a percentage of direct labor, chargeability ratio, again, based on payroll dollars, not on hours, um, average collection of period in days for AR, same thing for WIP, um, all the way down to backlog change, et cetera. But again, we don't generally benchmark ourselves against the overall industry. So we're a 320-person firm, so let's go look to see what that data looks like. So we click on number six here, which is staff size 201 to 350. Go back to the key indicators, or we can over here and jump to the key indicators. Um, we see that profit, the median profit now is about 12%. Um, they're achieving a slightly higher net direct labor multiplier of 3.11. Um, chargeability is around 58%. And the collection days is about 65. 
now let's look, again, this is an architecture firm, so now let's look at our peer group by practice area. And we can see that profit is still around about 12% as a percent of net revenue. Uh, the multiplier is still about the same, about a 3.1 was achieved. Um, overhead rate is about 188%. So one thing I want to point out here is that when we looked at the size, firm size, it was a little bit lower. But for architects, it's a little bit higher. So this seems like the 188 for the firm is not completely out of line. Um, 61 days collection, right in line with the median. So again, just continuing the tour, we offer the firm trends again. All of your data for all of these metrics will be pulled directly from your survey um, automatically. The green is something that you can input if you want to look at past trends. Then again, graphically, we represent the um, same information. Again, we're looking at architectural firms. With there are 34 firms in this particular sample size. The blue is your firm at 9.6%. The gold the, is the 75th percentile. The red is the fifth median. And the purple is the 25th percentile. Again, if we were talking historical results, we can see over the last 10 years, when we collectively look at all of the firms that were in each year's survey, we can see that profit has gone up and down, and we can compare your firm back to that, and that's this blue bar here. Just a quick look at a survey, um, because pretty much all of our surveys start with the same front end, because we try to create the peer groups. So we'll ask you information about your firm in order to get a total size. Um, we'll ask information about what major professional services are offered in-house. This one happens to be architecture, so they put a number one in. We'll look at geographic regions. Um, we'll look at how much of your work is performed for private clients versus government clients, and if there are specific um, market sectors that you practice in, then we would also like to get that information. And then once you get below this, since we're looking at finance, it turns into income statements and balance sheet data. But anyway, let's go ahead and go back. Um, so how can you get yours? Well, it's simple and it's free. And all firms that participate in our surveys get a customized abridged benchmarking tool, just like the ones I've demonstrated today, as a huge thank you for your time and sharing your data with our industry. Um, we definitely hope that you'll consider participating if you haven't before. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me. My contact information was on the first slide. But again, it's Kate Allen. My email is kallen at psnj.com or you can contact me by phone at 857-255-3206. One comment that I'd like to share just about confidentiality is that our surveys are handled in Excel so that they come directly back to me. Once we finish processing them, I actually take your specific survey, which is identified by your firm number, and we can go into more detail about that at another time, but I know your specific survey I create a benchmarking tool for you. And when you filled out the original survey, um, we actually ask you, who would you like us to return this to? And it's sent directly back to that person. So we're able to keep your data back to you. No one else sees your data, except for in a compiled format, which is um, the information that we just looked at. So again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us. And um, have a great 2014.